Okay, so now that we've got our glass word right there, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of texture to it. So I'm going to start off, well actually let me reposition the G and the L and put them below these two layers just so we can start off with the G and work our way up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make this glass uh, texture, but at the same time we're going to make it into an action so we just don't have to repeat the whole process for every single uh, letter. And uh, if you don't know much about actions, then leave a comment or send me a message or something like that to make a tutorial about actions and what exactly they do. But just for the time being, just follow along and we'll get through this together, alright? So we're going to go to Window and we're going to go to Actions or All plus F9 and then we'll bring up this little actions window and with this actions window we're just gonna go over here to the create a new action little icon right there and give that a click and this little new action thing is gonna pop up so we're just gonna go ahead and call this glass effect texture because that's exactly what this is if you want to make this into some kind of shortcut like pushing control F2 to redo this then that's completely fine but I'm just gonna turn that off for now and go ahead and hit record and we'll click this icon to hide this for the time being and what we're gonna do is go over here to the bottom left hand corner and click this icon right here to set this to the default black and white or you can hit the letter D that's a little shortcut you could use instead and then we're going to go back over here to the current layer which is the letter G and then with our icon over this letter T, a little thumbnail right there, we're going to hold the control key or the command key if you're on a Mac and give that a click. And over here you'll see that loaded that as a selection for you. So what's next is to go down here to the create a new layer icon and while holding control, give that a click. Or if you're on a Mac, you'd hold command, we'll give that a click or while clicking that. And then with this new layer, we're going to go to Filter, Render, Clouds. And then we're going to go to Filter, Distort, Glass. And the settings we're going to use for glass is have a distortion of 20, put the smoothness to 1, make sure the texture is set to tiny lens, and set the scaling to 55%. And that should be good right there, so we'll hit OK. And we'll do a little bit of a texture for you. And then we'll just go ahead and deselect that by hitting Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac. And then now that that's done, we'll just go ahead and go over here to the actions and we will stop recording. And then we'll minimize this whole glass effect texture and select that. And we'll go ahead and just do the same thing to the L, the S, the S, and the A. So select the letter L and then with glass effect texture selected push the play button and that's looking pretty good what you're looking for when you look at this is make sure that there's a good amount of lights and darks in the effect itself if the whole thing is kind of dark it's not gonna look very good when we're done with all this so we'll just go through this go to the S that's looking pretty good go to the next S that's actually pretty good too and we'll go to the A click that up. Uh, as you can see the A actually turned out kind of dark so we'll just take this layer that it made and trash it. Go back to letter A and push the play button again. Still a little bit dark. Let's try this again. Much better. Okay so what we're gonna do with each of these individual textures is we're gonna go to one of them and then duplicate it and then set the blend mode of the duplicated layer to overlay and then we're going to duplicate that layer again and then you can see all that's happening over here in the letter G you can see that when we duplicated it and set it to overlay it brightened it up a little bit and then duplicating it again just brightened it up even more and then we're going to take all three of these texture layers and merge them together with control E or command E and then set the fill to 5% and as you can see, if we zoom in, you can still see a little bit of the texture, but it's just that kind of glassy look. And that's actually all that we're going for here is just that slight glassy look. And then just do the same thing for the rest of these. We'll just duplicate, set it to overlay, duplicate again, merge them together, and repeat.
Okay, so once you're done doing that to all of the layers, we can go ahead and hide our actions menu because we're we're done doing this. And that's all there is for the actual glass texture itself, so you can be done right there as it is, or we can just uh, continue along with the effects. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and select all of these layers and group them together with Control G or Command G if you're on a Mac. And we're just going to rename this to glass. And the next thing we're going to go ahead and make is the light line that we had below the word glass. So we'll go to our background and we'll make a new layer and we'll call it light line. And to make this light line, all we're going to do is go over here to the elliptical marquee tool. And then somewhere in the middle of the letter A down here at the bottom, we'll go ahead and click and drag and then hold the alt key or the option key if you're on a Mac. And we'll make it relatively skinny, and we'll probably make it eh, just about yay big, and we'll let that go. And then if you look down here in the bottom left-hand corner, our background color is set to white. So if we want to fill in this selection with white, we'll go ahead and use the shortcut, Control Backspace, or Command Delete if you're on a Mac. And we'll just deselect that with Command D. And we're going to go ahead and blur this up. So we'll go to Filter, Blur motion blur and make sure the angle is set to zero and set the distance to 200 pixels and then we'll hit OK and that's not exactly long enough so we will repeat that last filter by hitting command F or control F my bad command F is the max shortcut <laughs> mixing up shortcuts here and then we'll just uh, do it again and again hitting uh, control F or command F depending on how big we want this to be and I think I'll just do it once more and that's looking alright to me so we'll go back to our move tool and we'll nudge this up with our arrow key and right there yeah right there will be okay for me so what we'll do with this is um, seeing as it looks a little bit dark I think I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it okay it looks a lot better to me but maybe a little bit less um, okay, that looks good to me, so I'll merge these together and rename it because that line was looking a little bit too uh, blurred out to me. So now that this is looking okay, we'll go ahead and give this an effect of an outer glow. And all we'll do is just set this to red and call it good. So that's looking pretty nice. Now what we're going to need to do is make the little highlights below each letter. So to do that, we're going to make sure we have our light line selected. And we're going to go back to our elliptical marquee tool. And I'm going to zoom in with my scroll wheel, which is an option you can enable in your preferences. The Just scrolling in and out with your scroll wheel. So in the middle of every letter, you're going to click and drag while holding alt. And just make a little selection right there, like so. And then you'll just duplicate the light line layer. And as you can see, it looks kind of ridiculous. So what we're going to do is make this blur a little bit to blend. So we'll go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur once again. But we'll change the distance back down to 20 pixels. And we'll hit OK. And we'll close this up. And I'm going to rename this layer Light-G because this is the light for the letter G. And we'll just change the normal blend mode to overlay instead. And it gives that a little bit of a red hue underneath the letter G. As you can see, that looks pretty sweet. So you're pretty much just going to use that same concept for underneath the letter A, or the letter L, underneath the two parts of the letter A, and under the two S's. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good as it is. Last thing that we need to add is that little bit of clouds in the background. So we'll just go ahead and go to the background right here, and we'll make a new layer. We will call it clouds. Oops, I totally missed my hand placement on that. That was an epic fail. <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead and go to filter, render, clouds. 
and we're just going to change the blend mode to color dodge and that's looking pretty cool so if you actually want to leave that as it is that's completely up to you but we're going to go ahead and add a layer mask to the clouds here by clicking this icon right there and then we'll just swap over to our brush oh, that's not the brush one down there we go so what we're going to do is go to our brush tool and making sure that our uh, foreground color is set to black down here we will go ahead and just start painting in black wherever we don't want the clouds to be so I'll just kinda maybe leave some down there in the bottom kinda get rid of that and maybe get rid of it a little bit over here and that actually looks pretty cool like, uh, right there so I'll just leave it right there awesome um, I actually lied there's one more thing we gotta do we gotta go ahead and add that reflection down here so what we'll do is go ahead and duplicate this group by right clicking on it and going to duplicate group and this little thing right here should pop up it's like do you want to duplicate it blah 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 we'll call this glass uh, reflection and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this glass reflection group and we're just gonna merge it all together by clicking merge group right there and then we're going to bring up the transform tool while having this selected by hitting control T or command T if you're on a Mac and then just right click somewhere and go to flip vertical and that will flip it for you and we can just click and drag it down while holding the shift key and we'll make it so that it matches up with the bottom there and so with this we're going to go ahead and add a layer mask to it and then we're going to go over here to our gradient tool make sure that we've got black and white right there for the foreground and background and so what we're gonna do is probably just click and drag from somewhere near the top or I guess the bottom of the letter A and then click and drag it maybe over there and that looks pretty cool but I'm gonna put the opacity down to maybe 50 percent like that and nothing looks like it needs to be moved around or anything like that so we are done. I think that went rather well, so awesome. This looks great. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know I did. It was kind of fun to do. I, I like the effect and how it turns out and all that stuff. If you liked this tutorial, please push like in the bottom left hand corner there. Or if you're new here, please subscribe so that you can watch our other tutorials and get updated on when we put more up especially starting in February when we start doing Tutorial Tuesdays. It's going to be pretty cool. Also, if you have a request, please go to our Facebook fan page. I'll put a link down there in the description. Uh, that way you can uh, talk to other people, talk to us, and stuff like that. And yeah, so I think that's all we've got. So thanks again for watching. We shall see you next time.